Were you there when he rose up from the grave? Were you there when he rose up from the grave? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when he rose up from the We gather after this tumultuous week. We started at a parade that was filled with confusion. We moved through an arrest, moved on to the crucifixion, and now this morning we come to resurrection. But we come here with all the woundedness that is part of our lives. Together, welcome. Let us go now into Sunrise Easter. In the summer of 1987, there was death on these shores. It was a death that had built up over a long time of neglect, abuse, and looking the other way. In the summer of 1987, Long Island Sound suffocated to death. Almost nothing was left alive in these once pristine depths from Long Island City to Old Saybrook. These holy waters, the salvation of early colonists in the form of fish and shellfish, the heart of ancient communities that have called this place home since time immemorial, died. It was killed by the very people who claimed to love it, need it, connect with it, baptized in its waters and tributaries. We and our ancestors killed Long Island Sound and all of its beautiful creatures in the summer of 1987. Since that faithful summer, a movement has picked up, gained steam, and meant much of its wild fish and wildlife have come back and succeeded in restoring these holy waters. One of my favorite things about majoring in French in college was learning also my own language of English. One of my favorite things I learned about English is our convenience of the present continual verb termination. This is anything ending with an I-N-G. We can so easily express in English the unfinished, the in progress, the actively engaged of speaking. Throughout the pandemic, I constantly found myself at the sound. Every day I've made a point since this time last year of at least seeing the sound once. It isn't just because it's beautiful and peaceful, but because it represents something so important for us these days. It represents the process of resurrecting. We think of this Easter as a moment, the second Jesus woke up somewhere deep within a tomb and roll the stone back. But in reality, Easter resurrection, ascension, isn't described as a moment. It isn't just that He is risen, it is that He is rising every day through us, the body of Christ. The movement of resurrecting. A force of resurrecting. In the winter, when the trees are free of leaves, I can see from our townhouse a small glimpse of Long Island Sound from our bedroom window. I make sure to say hello every morning when I wake up and reflect on the resurrecting work being done to bring life back to this holy water, to this sound, and the work we have to do to constantly, present continual verb, be resurrecting, especially in these times when a new world is breaking open. In 1987, like on the cross, something sacred and deep 
suffocated to death. Like Jesus, it died in part from neglect from those who loved and needed him most. Since that year, a community of conservation has been in the business of resurrecting, unfinished, always unfolding. Like we as a church, since the first day of resurrecting, have been in the business of working, unfolding, and healing the body of Christ and the wider world. We are always resurrecting. Amen. As I stand here this morning on familiar ground in a familiar place, looking out at all of these familiar faces, we've listened these past weeks to familiar verses and stories, names and music and prayers. The, today feels a little bit unfamiliar. The celebration of the resurrection of Jesus is today. And I always can, I can only think of it like a puzzle. A puzzle is a game or a toy that kind of challenges our thinking. It challenge, it's a problem and it's designed to make us wonder. It's designed to make us think. And it often has many pieces. The resurrection story of Jesus brings up a lot of questions for me. And there are so many pieces to this story. Jesus has died on the cross and risen from the tomb. We believe this to be true, and it is remembered and retold each year. It's like a favorite puzzle that you take out of the box and you do it over and over again. The pieces are always the same, but the puzzle is always challenging. When I get to this familiar day in the year, Easter, it doesn't feel like a challenge anymore. It feels familiar. It's like completing a puzzle. There's such great joy in seeing, and recognizing, and fitting all those pieces together to create a whole picture. The resurrection is a story of something once whole, broken apart into pieces, remembered, and put back together again. Blessings on this Easter Sunday. This morning we say, Christ is risen. risen indeed. And we begin with our scripture. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed. So she ran to Simon and Peter, Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, 
they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and I do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. Now Mary stood outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over and she looked into the tomb and she saw two angels sitting where Jesus' body had been laid, one at the head and one at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you weak, weeping? And she said, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will, ta um, I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbini, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the heavenly parent, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Abba and yours, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them all these things as she held them close. May God grant us wisdom and understanding to this passage. If you haven't been reading our weekly newsletter, The Steeple, you're really kind of missing out. Uh, my Holy Week worship this year has been shaped by the story written by Reverend Robert Rains in the March 10th edition. It's available on the church website. Bob tells stories about how his family and uh, Emily Dickinson and William Sloan Coffin and James Reston and Wendell Berry and even people whose loved ones have died from COVID have found ways to experience resurrection in the midst of grief. Reverend Rains wrote specifically about prayer, which he experiences as opening his heart, even a heart broken by grief, opening it to the gentle and tender verbs, bless, thank, help, forgive, heal, deliver, and comfort. At memorial services in the sanctuary, we often sing hymns of praise like, O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Or, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And I remember as a teenager, I didn't get it. <laughs> I remember asking the minister why we were singing such happy songs on sad occasions. <laughs> and the minister didn't give me the answer that I expected. I expected something about faith in the goodness of God or the promise of the resurrection. But the minister instead reminded me that we needed to practice resurrection even though the grieving members of the family probably weren't able to sing that hymn at such a sad time or believe it, the rest of the congregation would be singing it for them and believing it for them. And that's, so that's one of the ways that when we are in covenant, one with another, bound together, we show each other that covenant. Some of us will have more faith, more hope, more love at any one time and we are called to share it abundantly with those that need it and sing it for them. 
So my prayer life and my song life during the past year has really been a bunch of lament. <laughs> what the hell, God? <laughs> but with the help of Bob's words, encouraging this faith community in covenant together to find and to practice resurrection, even in the midst of this year, I've been ex experiencing what it feels like when you start up the lawnmower for the first time in the spring in a resurrection of my own spirit. I've changed the oil, I've filled the gas tank with gas, I've checked the spark plug and I pull the cord. <laughs> chug, 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 chug. <laughs> a little bit of hope. You know, I make sure I've choked the engine and I pull it again. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> A little bit of godly faith that the mower will start with the next pull, even though my humanness will still find a way to find some choice words that it hasn't started yet. And I will still lament to God that I'm tired of waiting. Tired of waiting to make music with the choirs of First Church. Tired of waiting to socialize unmasked in fellowship hall after worship with coffee in hand and kids scooting around. Tired of waiting for the, the mower to go vroom with a spark of new life. But in the meantime, instead of waiting for resurrection, Bob has reminded me in covenant with us and shared with me and all of us to, to remember to practice resurrection, to bless, to thank, to help, to forgive, to heal, to deliver, to comfort, and to hope. Masks and hats don't work very well together. <laughs> the stone has been rolled away. Jesus is risen. And we have new life in Christ. And aren't we grateful for that in a year of so many losses, so much violence, unrest, and uncertainty? Ginger asked us to share about new birth we may have experienced in this time. For me, it has been a shift of perspective of how I view the world and my place in it as a person of faith. Partly the shift has to do with learning new ways to take care of myself and others in this stressful time. I have returned again and again to our theme for this year, leaning into God as an important spiritual practice. I feel that my empathy and compassion have deepened as a result of this year, not only for humans, but for all of creation. As part of the web of creation, are not the trees and the plants and the soil impacted by the stress of this time? And what can I do about that? I felt rebirth in my faith being challenged in a good way, and the capacity of my heart being stretched to bring more of the world into it. So on this Easter Sunday, I hold hope and joy and gratitude and what new life we celebrate today. At the 9 a.m. service, we will be baptizing and receiving new members for the first time since 2019. And our new life continues this week as we send Ginger and Milton off with our blessing and prayers for her sabbatical time and we begin a new chapter sharing in ministry with Suzanne as our interim minister. Jesus' message of love and justice is alive and strong at First Church. We can trust in the promise that wherever this year leads us, the power of the risen Christ and the peace of Christ will accompany us there. We're about 70 of us on the beach this morning. Look around, offer your peace. And those of you at home or outside wherever you are, we offer peace to you and we celebrate the beauty of the sunrise this day. On Easter morning, when I wake to see the earth wrapped in that protective black shelter of night, 
I feel it, I sense it, and I seek it. The mystery that I cannot understand, God's promise of new life, and it is tucked in every one of our very beings. As sunlight breaks, I think about the women who gathered at the tomb. The risk and the danger that they were in as followers of Jesus and as women. How alarming and unsettling that their trip must have been. When I imagine them, I lean forward, hoping to touch some of their courage, their tenacity, and their bold love. These first evangelists set the groundwork for many, like the Lebanon missionary who was an English teacher, Nancy Wingo. During the war times, she implored people, do not pray for my safety. Pray that I can stay with my students and community and finish the work here. Or our own Jenny King, who's here today. Some of you remember, she put her fist up in the air as she was being arrested for protesting for immigration rights and equality and equity for all people. Those women set the stage. As the story of the women at the tomb echo on Easter morning, another moment rings loud for me too. I always hear my dad singing, up from the grave he arose, and put on your Easter bonnet. Both <laughs> sung with equal gusto. The hymn set the tone from whence we came acknowledging and marking the journey from the cross to the death to the resurrection of Christ. And the 1933 tune from Irvin Berlin's Put On Your Easter Bonnet engages us in a celebratory act. With joy we dress for the parade, which is life every day. This morning, as the sound ebb and flows, so do we. With our past wounds, our resurrected spirits, and hope-filled joy, we move into Easter day. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Death cannot keep its prey, Jesus, my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Let us now be God's people, gather in prayer. God of the resurrection in song and story, with prayer and silence. From sanctuary on church grounds, to people gathered in the sanctuary of the beach, to the church gathered in homes. We have touched the sacred through our time together. For all the ways, please join me, that we have missed opportunities to express our love, we are sorry. With gratitude, we receive grace, asking that you empower us to offer that same grace to ourselves and others.
hear us this day as we raise our voices in thanksgiving for your unending love and the love being shared throughout the world during our global crisis. With full hearts, we ask your blessing on each and every person struggling to make sense of these days. As we have been changed by the past year, we pray to embrace the pieces of life that lead us into the newness of resurrection and the peace of the risen Christ. the specifics of our community, the names of family members and friends that are listed in your bulletin, and the names of family members and friends who, whose names lie so deeply within your heart, we pray this day. And we can continue praying as Jesus taught, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because we are not partaking with communion with all of us together still, we invite you to go to the Memorial Garden and pick up uh, bread and cup there. They are individually contained. Or at home, we invite you to lift your cup and remember, to take your bread and eat and remember. Remember Christ's death and the joy of resurrection. And this morning, as we, before the benediction, as we send Ginger and she sends herself on sabbatical. <laughs> a moment of blessing for that journey. Suzanne, would you join me, kind of social distance, other side of Ginger and the staff behind us also. <laughs> and all of you at home and here, open palms with a, with a gesture down of blessing and receiving, sending and hope. Let us pray for a moment. O oh God, as Ginger and Milton and their family journey on this time of sabbatical, of Sabbath, of rest and renewal, we send them with our joy and affirmation of your presence and ministry through Ginger these past five years, the gift that she has been in all of our lives and in the lives of this community and congregation for half a decade. We give thanks for her ministry her insights, her joy, for the rolling of shoulders back and the deep breath of God's presence. May this time of sabbatical be a deep breath of your presence in her life, a renewal and joy. Amen. Amen. May the truth of Easter, the joy of Easter, and the blessings of Easter <laughs> be with us all these days. <laughs> Christ is risen. Risen, is risen indeed. indeed. Happy, happy Easter, everyone. Peace be with you. <laughs>